Okay, I want to talk real quick about creature cast rubber. Creature cast rubber was, uh, I believe, invented by a friend of mine, uh, Mark Snyder, out in Seattle. It is, uh, it's available through him on the website and on his Facebook page. And I'll throw the link in my description, uh, video description below. But the beauty of creature cast rubber is that you can basically replace latex, liquid latex, uh, in your workshop across the board except for um, makeup applications or any skin build-up applications. Uh, there's still makeup grade liquid latex was always different from um, slush casting um, or other you know types of liquid latex. So they're very similar but makeup grade liquid latex is, is sold for use on skin directly and um, Creature Cast is not yet has not yet got that um, has not met those requirements that I know of yet. So this is going to be for everything but used directly on skin for makeup applications. However, it's a water-based uh, neoprene rubber where uh, liquid latex is a natural rubber and ammonia-based. This is a similar kind of runny consistency. This is a sample size, a pint, and uh, it smells like rubber tires, fresh tires, sort of, which is... Uh, to a lot of people more pleasant than that harsh ammonia smell and then they have a thexotropic additive so this is something that you can uh, neothex he calls it it's something you can add to that consistency to make something more like this consistency here which I just put a dab of it in um, and you can go up to 20 percent by weight so um, that's sort of what I want to use here to brush on we're brushing on thing the puppet for Adam's family musical and I want to close up this uh, cell structure on this upholstery foam so I got a heavy coat brushed out on here and we'll run the fan on the um, on the, the ventilation hood just so that we get a good breeze and he dries out quickly so I can maybe build up one or two more layers we're looking to get rid of the marker marks and uh, homogenize the surface texture and uh, so that the lights and stuff look good on that I just put a dab of acrylic paint in this I have these um, box of jars that I inherited somehow but it makes a great place to mix colors and store in these jars so I put some creature cast rubber in and to make a flesh tone uh, this is a cool trick that I learned in college it's just raw sienna if you can get raw sienna uh, depending on what materials you're mixing together the color raw sienna and white will give you a wide variety of base tones for um, white people skin I guess you could call it and then um, you know you can tweak it from there and so there'll be a red blush people's hands white people's hands anyway um, I'm gonna continue to quantify that even though it's annoying but um, or or uh, be more particular but we have a lot of red there's a lot of blood that you can see see that the red tones in here which is why we don't use a red screen to do chrome keying um, with people involved because you'll pull a lot of uh, the person the, the computer software will pull a lot of the pixels that are a red tone and uh, make the person transparent so we use green or blue screen because there's none of that in human skin anyway long story short there'll be a red blush that I make up to do like the knuckles if you see like on my hand and uh, pull those tones up in him a little bit however for the most part, you want to make white people's skin white and raw sienna. So because Creature Cast is like a natural off-white, I put a big dab of raw sienna in, I shook it up, I got a color I was comfortable with, and that's what I left in this container. Then I went and added the Thixotropic um, additive right in the jar that goes to my critter spray gun, which is uh, $30 on Amazon. It's a critter. It's a siphon gun, so it takes an ordinary ball jar, siphon tube goes down in there, and then... Um, just like a um, any Venturi effect, the air being sprayed across the top of the siphon sucks the stuff up and blows it blows it out. So it's a great way to to um, spray a bunch of things that you don't want to run right through the core guts of the gun, which is how a lot of these. This is an air gun, but any other ordinary HVLP gun is going to draw paint or material down into it, and at least into these components ahead of the paint. Um, hopper and pull them through and shoot them across a needle so this is just pulling um, stuff right through the, the tube and you can see all the way up there you can use a pipe cleaner and what I like to do because creature cast is water based is before anything dries is I'll just when I'm finished I'll put uh, water in a ball jar and go over to the sink and just spray it until water's coming out um, and you can also put the the air gun tip right in there and blow it right straight out so that's a nice way to keep him clean 
um, and we may end up doing that. He just wasn't building up. You can you can shoot the thick thickened version, which is what I was planning to do, but it just wasn't building up fast enough, and we're in a big hurry here, so we're going to continue to brush it. However, um, you can use this anywhere you would use liquid latex. It's great for coating all different kinds of foam. You can also slip cast it. So if you have a plaster mold, um, any kind of stone, we would call it, um, or plaster mold, this is for some ears, so just a flat mold, and uh, those are quick and dirty, um, but anything that you would dwell latex in, so you pour a, a negative up solid, I don't have a good mold for dwelling in right here, but um, you pour it up solid with liquid latex in the past, and you leave it for some time, and as you leave it, the surface of latex against the, the dry plaster loses moisture, loses moisture, loses moisture, then after a certain time you pour the rest out, and that inside surface will become air dry, and then you pull out a rubber shell, which is how your latex mask is made. Creature cast rubber works in the same way. So um, you can color it intrinsically with an acrylic paint. You can order from Mark a batch that's intrinsically colored to a certain common color. You can get black or whatever. And, uh, and then you can dwell it in plaster molds and make your rubber Halloween masks that way or anything else that you would use liquid latex for. It will last a lot longer. It won't break down from oxidation the way natural liquid latex does. It won't break down from UV rays uh, the way latex does. And the one last, the icing on the cake, this is super flex, but he's got super flex, semi flex, semi rigid, and rigid at least, if there aren't, if there's not more. And if you can com combine them, I believe. But there's a few different rigidities. And um, so as a tough, hard rubber coating, more like a tire, if you get rigid, you can dwell it and quickly get it out of the mold before it fully cures, and then you have a really heavy-duty um, rubber casting from your mold. Or if you wanted to foam fabricate something and make it really stiff and heavy-duty rigid, you can use you know, the, um, uh, the rigid uh, creature cast. And you can put that right onto rigid foams too, so if you sculpt in urethane foam or styrene foam, it's water-based, so you can brush that stuff or spray it right up on top and make a nice hard shell that it still has some some give, like some of these production plastics that you know we're used to that that uh, I'm trying to find some stuff like polypropylene, some of these tougher plastics that are still a bit soft. Um, you can get that kind of a quality out of it. So I really like it, and um, it's a great product. Mark's great to deal with, and he rushes right out to us. And so um, you can also directly paint on top with acrylic paint, by the way. It's going to be better probably if you have something raw, like just as soon as this dries, if I did a paint job with acrylic, or just as soon as you pulled something out of the mold cast in Creature Cast, like that same day or the next few days, um, you can build up paint job right on it with acrylic paint. And um, that will bond up real good. And obviously you can mix 50-50 and make sort of a PAX paint kind of a thing. So 50% acrylic color, 50% your creature cast of choice. Now you've really got, uh, if you can live with the fact that it doesn't dry clear the way Praze does. Praze makes a great um, PAX paint because it dries clear. So you can make your exact color in paint. Split it 50-50 with Praze, which will lighten it for the time. Do your paint job, which is hard to do because it's been lightened by the whiteness of the Praze. But ultimately, when the Praze dries, it goes back to your true color that you made because the Praze is clear. Creature Cast, on the other hand, is white. So the color you're looking at is just a touch lighter. Um, then it will dry. So, you know, if you can't do a paint job that way, you will have to use acrylic um, to either do the paint job or make an extremely dense, intrinsic colored batch. But, um... Wanted to cover all the major points of that and link to Mark's um, page, sort of get the word out about it. It's a kind of a miracle material, as far as I'm concerned, and I just love love using it and mentioning it to others. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you.